The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are locked on now. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Now MLB, local experts weighing in on the biggest stories in baseball. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. We've got our Locked On MLB hosts. They're going to recap all of the action for you from Wednesday. Justin Verlander making a bid for another no-hitter in last night's best performance. The best performance. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Verlander took that no-hitter into the seventh. Jordan Alvarez provided the run support as the Astros took out the A's on Wednesday night. Locked on Astros breaks down a full team win for Houston. Hey, H-Town Wheelhouse here with Locked on Astros. And the Astros win against the Oakland A's 5-4. to They scratch across a victory. Some late inning heroics by the offense. And Justin Verlander pitched a pretty good game. This game wasn't his best well actually yeah it was it was one of his best he actually almost threw a no hitter took it into six and one thirds inning Oakland made a late push for the victory but the reason why I came out here to do this outside with the sun in the background is because hey it's Astros baseball the sun is still shining and there are questions about this offense I'm going to talk about that tonight on the podcast going to try to break things down a little bit look at this year look at the expected batting averages the expected numbers um, runs home runs things like that and maybe try to answer some questions as to what's going on. We may not be able to break it down psychologically or talk to the players. We can definitely put our best foot forward. So stay tuned in to Locked on Astros. Remember, we're your team every day. And as always, go Strohs. Boston got something a bit out of the ordinary yesterday against the Reds, a quality start and run support in the same game. Locked on Red Sox has more on the win over Cincinnati. The Red Sox avoid being swept by the Reds thanks to some timely hitting from Alex Verdugo and Jackie Bradley Jr., as well as a strong night from Garrett Whitlock. Hey, it's Lauren from Locked On Red Sox, and Boston is back in the win column after a much-needed victory at Fenway Park on Wednesday night. Garrett Whitlock turned in a strong start. Tanner Houck once again was strong in relief. Jake and I are going to break this all down for you, as well as Jeff Carr from Locked on Reds. That's right, we are bringing you a special crossover episode for Thursday's episode of Locked on Red Sox. Cleveland finished off their series sweep of the Royals thanks to a solid outing from their rookie starter. Locked on Guardians details everything for you postgame. Can we face the Royals every day? That's a question I also ask on the podcast. Uh, the Royals are bad. The Guardians take advantage and win their third in a row. Connor Pilkington, uh, what a trade that was for the Guardians. Because not only did they add Connor Pilkington when they traded Cesar Hernandez uh, to the White Sox, but then allowed this White Sox to trade away Nick Madrigal and Matt Foster for Craig Kimbrell, who they then flipped for A.J. Pollock. So they have gotten bad production at both ends of that trade for the White Sox, and they gave up multiple years of control and flexibility, and they still have no answer at second base and nothing to show for it. So the Guardians got Connor Pilkington, who was awesome today. Five innings, uh, eight strikeouts, no earned runs, and somehow managed to convince the White Sox to go make some of their trades that hurt them. Uh, that's a net win-win. But on top of Pilkington's great performance, you have Andres Jimenez with the double, continues to play exceptionally well. I just wish he was playing at shortstop, please. Uh, you had some big plays by Richie Palacios as well, coming up some clutch hitting. They put up one run in four straight innings and win this one 4 nothing. Three-game winning streak for the Guardians. Two games under 500. Going to Baltimore. Chance to finally get over 500 here. Keep it going, Guardians. Coming up, the Pirates complete a rare sweep of L.A. This is Locked On Now MLB. Today's edition of Locked On Now is brought to you by Bet Online, the number one spot for all of your online sports gambling needs. The NBA Finals are upon us, and the Stanley Cup playoffs continue. So head over there to get all of your bets in. Just go to betonline.net. Welcome back to Locked On Now MLB. I'm Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. We continue now with our look around the league. Let's go around the league. The Giants fell to the Phillies by one on Wednesday, and our Locked On Giants host is not happy about it. He is convinced the officials stole this one from San Francisco, while Locked On Phillies is pretty happy to escape with a win. One big inning wasn't enough as the Giants lost what was, for me, just an extremely frustrating game, having to take on not just the Phillies, 
but the umpiring crew as well. Ben Kaspik with the Locked On Giants podcast. Look, I was just recording a podcast and I said, I don't want to blame the umpires for this game. But you know what? I changed my mind. I want to blame the umpires for this game. I think a lot of time we don't fully recognize just how much of an impact strike ball calls have on the game. And I mean, there was a Mike Yastrzemski at bat. It would have been ball four leading off an inning. Instead, it's strike three. And that literally, in terms of expected run value, takes more than half a run off the board. And so you're not only facing a major league team in the Phillies, but you're the night before the run expectancy, according to the umpire scorecards, Twitter account difference based on missed calls was plus 2.7 runs in favor of the Phillies. We are literally talking about almost three additional runs that you have to overcome based on, I mean, hello, that's just absurd. And, and for tonight's game, it's not going to be that bad, but I would venture to say it's over a run again and this was a one run game so look the offense showed some fight Harleen Garcia coughed it up and gave up four earned runs his first run of the season and and he gave up four of them and and it was big and so yeah we're venting on Locked On Giants where it's your team every day there it is the Phillies finally win a game five straight losses but they bounce back in the series ender against the Giants uh, they had to fight for this one they needed a late comeback. It wasn't a great game, and they still don't look like a team that can go on a run, but man, it's nice to just win one. Connor Thomas, host of Locked On Phillies. Let me tell you what this doesn't mean. This doesn't mean that Joe Girardi is safe. This doesn't mean that this team is on their way to the playoffs. This doesn't mean that all of their problems are remedied. It's nice that they won one, but winning the ender of a series that you've already lost is not enough to carry the team through. And it's a nice win. But you look at it, Gene Segura's out three months. Bryce Harper has forearm tightness that who knows how long it'll keep him out. This was a nice team win, but this team is still in major trouble. And I still think they need a major change. And I hate to come out of a win saying that they still need to make a managerial change. But I don't know. That's just where I'm at right now. It's going to be an interesting off day tomorrow. But we take a win into it. We sleep a little easier tonight than we did the past five nights. Phil's win. We'll take that one. The White Sox didn't have much to contribute yesterday, and the pitching made just enough mistakes on the mound to let the Blue Jays take a four-run win. Our Locked on White Sox host goes over the loss as Chicago tries to avoid the sweep later on today. The Chicago White Sox lost once again to the Toronto Blue Jays 7-3. to White Sox starter Michael Kopech only went uh, three innings. He gave up uh, a bunch of runs. It was one of his worst outings of the year. Uh, Sox pitching as a whole issued eight walks to the Toronto Blue Jays, and they made the Sox pay uh, several extra base hits, uh, including a home run from Vlad Jr. Uh, White Sox offense, uh, very little uh, going on. Once again, could not take advantage of runners in scoring position, could not get the big hit uh, when they needed it. Uh, Sox turned to Johnny Cueto, uh, for a day game on Thursday. The Dodgers definitely have some things to figure out after finishing their series with the Pirates without a win. After one of the best teams in baseball couldn't beat one of the worst teams all week, our Locked On Dodgers host tells us why. Look, guys, we don't know each other that well, so you might not know this, but this is not my happy face. What's up? It's Jeff from Locked On Dodgers. The Dodgers got swept by the Pirates. A uh, little background information, Dodgers are one of the best teams in baseball. Pirates are one of the worst teams in baseball. Dodgers should be the sweepers, not the sweepies. Uh, instead, they got swept by the Pirates. It was uh, ugly. This game in particular, some base running. I, I don't know what the word is, uh, but you know, there's gonna be a lot of words about the, about the base running on tomorrow morning's Locked on Dodgers because uh, yeah, it was not great. And it's a little bit of a pattern we've seen a little bit of in the last few weeks. They're also, uh, their instant replay decisions leave something to be desired. We're going to talk some about that too. Uh, none of those things really cost them this game, but uh, it's easy to say that base running and instant replay decisions might have cost them two or three runs and they lost by four runs and they might not have, uh, you know, the last four runs or the last three runs came 
after the Dodgers had kind of punted the game and brought in a relief pitcher who wouldn't have been pitching in a closer game. So who knows what would have happened, but we're going to talk all about that, all about this ugly, dumb, stupid series, and hopefully the Dodgers can put it behind them because the Mets are coming into town. So check out Locked On Dodgers. Make it your first listen every day. Colorado Rockies played a doubleheader yesterday and came away with one win at the very last opportunity. Our Locked On Rockies host goes over the long day of baseball against the Marlins. Rock on Rockies fans, Paul Holden here from the Locked on Rockies podcast. Eight long hours of Rockies baseball today. The Rockies blew leads. They got crushed in game one, but it all ends on Brendan Rodgers' three game or three home run game Rodgers walks it off in the bottom of the 10th after having his best game of the season of the Rodgers breakout leads to a successful path for the Rockies it could be massive but the Rockies showed a lot of bad things today the Rockies certainly could not pitch today the Rockies certainly could not hit in the first game but the Rockies finally win a series they win uh, two out of three in what feels like forever and Brendan Rodgers leads the way Way. A massive game for him, saves the pitchers, saves the Rockies from collapse, and sends the folks that stayed for eight hours of Rockies baseball home happy. We'll break it all down here on Locked On Rockies. Arizona lost Wednesday to Atlanta, but our Locked On Diamondbacks host is still happy his team was able to take two out of three from the defending champs. D-backs dropped the final game of the series to the Braves, but since they took two out of three, I'm going to say they're better than the reigning World Series champs. Miller Thomas of Lock on Dimebacks here. Mad Bum had an interesting start today because I felt like he kind of labored through today's start. Yes, he went six innings. Yes, he only allowed two earned runs with six strikeouts, but the Braves had run scoring opportunities through the first four innings of today's ball game. But hey, Mad Bum didn't allow any damage, didn't allow any runs to score. So that's really the most important part. Unlike his counterpart, Nowhere Ramirez, who took over in the seventh inning, he put two men on, then gave up a three run jack to Austin Riley. This was a two run ball game until the seventh. Mad Bum kept it close, but the bullpen blew it open for the Braves. And it's not like the offense showed up today either because. They had more strikeouts than hits and walks combined. They were 0 for 4 at runners in scoring position. So the bullpen did not show up. The offense didn't show up. But at least Mad Bum showed up. And the D-backs still take 2 out of 3 against the reigning World Series champ. So still an impressive series win. And now they get to face the Pittsburgh Pirates starting on Friday, which could be another series win under their belt. The Rangers only scored three runs while leaving plenty more on the bases against the Rays and ended up falling in extras to Tampa. Our Locked On Rangers host goes over the missed opportunities for Texas. Well, that kind of sucked. Rangers lose 4-3 to three in 11 innings, had the chance to take 3 out of 4 and win this series already against this really good Rays team. But instead, they'll have to try for that in tomorrow's game. I'm Bryce Patrick, host of Locked On Rangers podcast. An 11-inning loss for the Rangers in which John Gray had his best start of the season. The Rangers have needed him to be much better than he has been. It was a horrific night offensively for the Rangers in terms of hitting with runners in scoring position. The Rangers were 1 for 12. 1 for 12. They left 14 runners on base in this one. Not a great day for them there. A decent day for Cole Calhoun, except for on the base pass. Got picked off, caught stealing. Not a great decision there by a guy who is in his mid-30s. Maybe, maybe leave the running to the younger, more spry fellows, but he did have a great day in the outfield, made a great outfield assist at second base. I'm still not sure how he got him there. Um, was robbed of extra base hits by the right fielder, <sighs> Brett Phillips, and had a multi walk game, multiple hits from Sam Huff and Nathaniel Lowe, who both had solo shots in this one that gave the Rangers a 2 1 lead. Seven innings, one run that came off of a solo shot from John Gray, 12 strikeouts in this one. Tough way to lose, tough to lose in extra innings anytime. But the Rangers fought hard, and they have a chance to win this series, this four-game series against one of the best teams in baseball. And you know what? There are worse ways to start off the month of June. The home run ball served the Orioles well in beating the Mariners on Wednesday. Baltimore hit four out of Camden Yards and locked on Orioles. And Mariners has a full recap for you. Well, I got to admit, things were a little tense in Birdland tonight with the news of Grayson Rodriguez leaving his AAA start with injury. It's lat discomfort. We'll keep an eye on that, of course. But at the big league level, the Orioles win the game against the Mariners. 9-2 to victory to even the three-game series at one game apiece. And how about the Oriole offense? Four home runs on the night. 
Rugnet Odor with the big blast early against Robbie Ray. And the O's had their first three-homer inning of the season with Ryan Mountcastle and Ramon Arias going back-to-back. -back. And then Mancini later hitting a two-run homer all in the sixth to break this game wide open. Kyle Bradish kind of bounced back with a nice little start in this one. Bullpen was basically perfect once again. But a big night for the Oriole offense with nine runs. And they even up this series. And everybody seemingly hit the ball hard for the O's in this one. And I'll recap all the action coming up on Thursday's episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. That's all for today on Locked On Now MLB. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. Make sure you check out Locked On MLB and your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Kanani Stevens. This has been Locked On Now.